once again. Learning to read and write was difficult for me. In the beginning, I found words distracting. I would get lost in their color instead of their meaning. As a child, I thought everyone saw numbers and letters and colors. It wasn't until I was about six or so that I began to recognize that this, that this was something unusual or atypical. At the dinner table one evening, I mentioned to my mother, casually, that the number four was orange. She assumed... I was just being super imaginative and didn't believe me when I told her I could see no difference between the number four and its orange color. In order to prove to her that I wasn't fabricating any of it, we made color-coded charts of the numbers and of the alphabet. Over chicken noodle soup or steak, she would pop quiz me and without hesitation, I'd holler back the colors, always the same. Once it came time to learn to read and write for school, focusing was a struggle. My grandmother was the one to teach me how to spell my last name and address so I would be ready for kindergarten. She was a teacher and a librarian and a very wise lady. She taught me to simplify. She showed me that Heritage Drive, my street, could be broken down into three easy words, her, it, age. In the second grade, I was in the lowest reading group. Then one day I got frustrated and decided I would think about nothing else, nothing else but reading and writing until I got it right. I also had to learn not to get distracted by my synesthesia in other classes. That was an entirely other thing to deal with inside itself. Math was confusing because the numbers were just so beautiful and I would get lost in a myriad of azure and chartreuse. Before I knew it, my name was being called on to multiply, and I wasn't able to explain to the teacher that another system of thought was engulfing my mind. Over and over again, I met with impatient teachers who saw my intelligence and thought I was being lazy. No one knew where to put me, so they split my classes up into some honors as well as special ed. It was only in the quiet space, in the time alone, that I learned how to see the function of words behind the layer of color, a sort of self-taught meditation where the medicine of language flowed from my being. It came out as poetry, no longer fragmented pieces of frustration. When I was in seventh grade, my English teacher saw potential in me. She was the fairy tale, magic kind of teacher you hear stories about the one who stayed after class and taught me how to write a paper properly. Henry Miller once said, writing like life itself is a voyage of discovery. The adventure is a metaphysical one. It is a way of approaching life indirectly, of acquiring a total rather than a partial view of the universe. The writer lives between the upper and lower worlds. He takes the path in order to eventually become the path himself. And we can add a she in there, because, you know, good old Henry Miller. Um, yeah.